Welcome back to Call to Community. We are on chapter 27, Acceptance, which contains two sections. One, you know, really quite interesting piece by Jürgen Moltmann, um, the German theologian. And he's talking about this idea, this Aristotelian idea, I guess, of birds of a feather flock together, um, like attracts like. We see this on, on a broad scale in society, you know, especially in our internet age of polarization where people get into their tribes, um, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess it can become dangerous and even deadly when you just try to eliminate people that aren't like you or push them out. So right. this kind of explores right. the roots of that and That's how it applies to community. Yeah, I mean, you bring it to a, a micro level um, in our in our community, and I probably in any other community, however you want to define community, um, whether it's just fellowships or whether it's even just people. People tend to want to be with people who confirm their sense of identity. Um, and that's why we hang out with people who are like us, um, is because we want people um, who, who confirm us, who make us feel okay. Um, he writes, however, people who are different from us, that is, people whose thoughts, feelings, and desires are different from ours, make us feel insecure. We therefore love those who are like us, and we shun those who are different from us. And when these others live in our midst, expressing their need for recognition, interest, and humanity, we react with defensiveness, increased self-confirmation, anxiety, and disparagement. And then he speaks about how this is the roots of evils such as racism, anti-Semitism, you know. Discrimination against discrimination. people of different or varying abilities. I, yeah, this was a really interesting thought because, I mean, I, I think everyone could think of an anecdote or at some point in their life where they were in an uncomfortable situation or place that I can certainly recall many, many times in, in my past where that's been the case. And actually, when you're around people that have different vantage points or ideals from you, it actually pushes you to dig into your, what, what you hold dear and true and also learn from others that have a very different perspective. So those have been the most enriching times in my life, just being around people that are not the same as me. And I think in community we see that too quite often because none of us are that similar, I don't think. No, no. You know, if you do br visit one of our Birdroff communities, you'll find people with very different and often opposing uh, viewpoints on issues, um, you know, everything from how they parent their, raise their kids to, uh, you know, political views. Of course, we do all hold the same faith commitments, um, and, and, that, and that's actually what, what Jürgen Moltmann then speaks about. Like, how do we overcome this, how, or, or how, do we, how do we not stay in our flocks or in our interest groups? Um, how do we overcome this this insecurity or this um, you know this this concern about loss of identity? He says we overcome that um, when we realize that Christ has accepted us as as we are, and He's also accepted our fellow community member as they are, and He does that because he loves us. Because mm -hmm. he, he wants to put up with us. He, wants, he mm -hmm. suffers us with all our, with all our fallibilities and, and problems and issues. So he, therefore he suffered for us. So he does this play on words. It says, to say it quite simply, God suffers because of us for he wants to suffer us. Which I thought was pretty powerful. Yeah, and I think, I think that does overcome um, you know, when I think of the people who I may have conflict with in life um, due to, you know, because they think differently than me or act differently than me, if, if I do stop to reflect on the fact that, you know, Christ suffered for them and Christ suffers for me um, for the many ways that both of us hurt, you know, the people in our lives and, and do things that are that that actually does then disarm. It, it, it does take down the walls. Um, 
and, you, and you're able to see things, maybe not so much from your own vantage point, but from the vantage point of our creator. Mm -hmm. um, and it also provides a lot of freedom because then we're, we're not just confined to self-affirmation or self-confirmation. We actually have the freedom to lose that anxiety and the scales will fall from our eyes and we're able to just rejoice in, in the freedom of Christ and that He accepted everyone and loved everyone. Yeah, and that's, that's, the, amu that's the amazing part about it. And, and I've also, we've experienced it here in our community life. It, this doesn't, like a, you know, doesn't require long uh, struggle sessions or working through issues. In fact, those, those things can actually be um, counterproductive. Um, sometimes it is, well, we would call it a, a breaking in of the spirit, where, where as Doreen read and, and as Moltmann says, you know, the scales do fall from your eyes. You actually start to see things with the eyes of, of or through the eyes of Christ, and all these barriers melt away instantaneously. This does happen, like I, I can absolutely um, attest to it. So, excellent, excellent piece by Jurgen Moltmann. Followed by, I found kind of an amusing little anecdote by Adele J. Gonzalez, hmm. um, who I was not familiar with, but she recounts a story of going on a hike in the White Mountains of New Hampshire with her family and with an ingrown toenail. Um, That's really putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, so she really brings it down to earth and she recounts how she hiked in considerable agony, slowing down the group and then the epiphany came when her brother uh, yeah, I think it was took her off brother. her boot, her hiking boot, and cut off the toe right. of the boot, not her toe, allowing her ingrown toenailed toe to experience freedom and ability to move without constraint. <laughs> <laughs> this is intense. <laughs> so what an anecdote. So yeah. the uh, I guess the analogy being that in our church fellowships, we should give people who are a pain more, more room to move. <laughs> Which I'm not. I mean, I don't 100 percent buy into that. Like that is not a cure for an ingrown toenail cutting off a toe of the yeah. boot. In fact, it ruins the boot's functionality. So I think. The better analogy would be go to the doctor and get the toenail fixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me it seemed like a very temporary, a temporary solution. Yeah. And, and been, I'm, I'm not sure where we went from there. Um, I, I guess she was able to hike the rest of the way, which is probably a good thing. But, um, but her boot, ultimately she her still had that ingrown toenail. Yeah. Anyway, interested in what you think about that anecdote. And uh, if you could shed more light on that, or if we're not seeing it quite correctly. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week, Chapter 28.